सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स इन टाइटल आर पास वन पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड फोर्टीन चैप्टर इलेवन टाइटल्ड बिल्डिंग्स पेंटिंग्स एंड बुक्स मरुत्सामी एंड द आयरन पिलर Marutsami was so excited his brother had propelled his wheelchair all along the dusty stony path past the towering qutub minar and up the metal ramp it had been tough but now he was here in front of the famous iron pillar it was an unforgettable experience the iron pillar The iron pillar at Mehroli, Delhi is a remarkable example of the skill of Indian craftspersons. It is made of iron, 7.2 meters high and weighs over 3 tons. It was made about 1500 years ago. We know the date because there's an inscription on the pillar mentioning a ruler named Chandra. who probably belonged to the gupta dynasty chapter 10 what is amazing is the fact that the pillar has not rusted in all these years metallurgy ancient indian metallurgists made major contributions to the metallurgical history of the world archaeological excavations have shown that the harappans were master craftsmen and had knowledge of copper metallurgy they even manufactured bronze by mixing copper and tin while the harappans belonged to the bronze age their successors belonged to the iron age india produced highly advanced types of iron forged iron wrought iron and cast iron on this page a picture is shown this is the iron pillar buildings in brick and stone the skills of our crafts persons are also apparent in the buildings that have survived such as stupas the word stupa means a mound while there are several kinds of stupas round and tall big and small these have certain common features generally there's a small box placed at the center or heart of the stupa this may contain bodily remains such as teeth bone or ashes of the buddha or his followers or things they used as well as precious stones and coins page number 115 This box known as a relic casket was covered with earth later a layer of mud brick or baked brick was added on top and then the dome like structure was sometimes covered with carved stone slabs often a path known as the pradakshina path was laid around the stupa this was surrounded with railings entrance to the path was through gateways devotees walked around the stupa in a clockwise direction as a mark of devotion both railings and gateways were often decorated with sculpture find amravati on map 7 page number 105 this was a place where a magnificent stupa once existed Many of the stone carvings for decorating the stupa were made about 2000 years ago. Other buildings were hollowed out of rock to make artificial caves. Some of these were very elaborately decorated with sculptures and painted walls. Some of the earliest Hindu temples were also built at this time. Deities such as Vishnu, Shiva, and durga were worshiped in these shrines 
the most important part of the temple was the room known as the Garbhagrihi, where the image of the chief deity was placed. It was here that priests performed religious rituals and devotees offered worship to the deity. A picture is shown on the right-hand top of this page. This is the great stupa at Sanchi, Madhya Pradesh. Stupas like this one were built over several centuries. While the brick mound probably dates to the time of Ashoka, Chapter 7, the railings and gateways were added during the time of later rulers. On the left bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is a sculpture from Amaravati. Look at the picture and describe what you see. Page number 116 Often, as at Bhitargaon, a tower known as the Shikhar was built on top of the Garbhagrihi to mark this out as a sacred place. Building Shikhars required careful planning. Most temples also had a space known as the Mandap. It was a hall where people could assemble. Find Mahabalipuram and Ahol on map 7, page number 105. Some of the finest stone temples were built in these towns. Some of these are shown here. On the right-hand side top, a picture is shown. This is an early temple at Bhitargaon, Uttar Pradesh. This was built about 1,500 years ago and was made of baked brick and stone. On the top right, a picture is shown. You can see monolithic temples at Mahabalipuram in this picture. Each of these was carved out of a huge single piece of stone. That is why they are known as monoliths, while brick structures are built up by adding layers of bricks from the bottom upwards. In this case, the stone cutters had to work from top downwards. List the problems that stone cutters may have faced. A picture is shown in the bottom of this page. It's the picture of the Durga temple at Ahol, built about 1,400 years ago. Page number 117. How were stupas and temples built? There were several stages in building a stupa or a temple. Usually, kings or queens decided to build these as it was an expensive affair. First, good quality stone had to be found, quarried and transported to the place that was often carefully chosen for the new building. Here, these rough blocks of stone had to be shaped and carved into pillars and panels for walls, floors and ceilings. And then these had to be placed in precisely the right position. In the middle of this page, a picture is shown. It's a Jain monastery from Odisha. This two-story building was carved out of the rock surface. Notice the entrance to the rooms. Jain monks lived and meditated in these rooms. In what ways is the cave shown here different from the illustration on page number 14? Another picture is shown in the bottom of this page. It's a sculptor from the National Museum, New Delhi. Can you see how some of the caves may have been hollowed out? Kings and queens probably spent money from their treasury to pay the craftspersons who worked to build these splendid structures. Besides, when devotees came to visit the temple or the stupa, they often brought gifts which were used to decorate the buildings. 
For example, an association of ivory workers paid for one of the beautiful gateways at Sanchi. Among the others who paid for decorations were merchants, farmers, garland makers, perfumers, smiths, and hundreds of men and women who are known only by their names, which were inscribed on pillars, railings, and walls. Page number 118 So when you get a chance to visit any of these buildings, remember how several hundreds of people probably worked to construct and decorate them. Make a diagram like the one on page 88, chapter 8, to show the stages in the building of a temple or stupa. Painting Find Ajanta on map 7, page number 105. This is a place where several caves were hollowed out of the hills over centuries. Most of these were monasteries for Buddhist monks and some of them were decorated with paintings. Here are some examples. As the caves are dark inside, most of these paintings were done in the light of torches. The colours, which are vivid even after 1,500 years, were made of plants and minerals. The artists who created these splendid works of art remain unknown. There are two paintings shown on this page. These paintings are from Ajanta. Describe what you see in each of these paintings. Page number 119 The World of Books Some of the best-known epics were written during this period. Epics are grand, long compositions about heroic men and women and include stories about gods. A famous Tamil epic, the Silappadikaram, was composed by a poet named Ilango around 1,800 years ago. It is the story of a merchant named Kovalan who lived in Puhar and fell in love with a courtesan named Madhavi, neglecting his wife Kannagi. Later, he and Kannagi left Puhar and went to Madurai, where he was wrongly accused of theft by the court jeweler of the Pandya king. The king sentenced Kovalan to death. Kannagi, who still loved him, was full of grief and anger at this injustice and destroyed the entire city of Madurai. A description from the Silappadikaram here is how the poet describes Kannagi's grief. O oh, witness of my grief, you cannot console me. Is it right that your body, fairer than pure gold, lies unwashed here in the dust? Is it just that in the red glow of the twilight, your handsome chest, framed with a flower wreath, lies thrown down on the bare earth. While I remain alone, helpless and abandoned to despair, is there no God? Is there no God in this country? Can there be a God in a land where the sword of the king is used for the murder of innocent strangers? Is there no God? No God? Another Tamil epic the Mani Mekhalai was composed by Sattanar around 1,400 years ago. This describes the story of the daughter of Kovalan and Madhavi. These beautiful compositions were lost to scholars for many centuries till their manuscripts were rediscovered about a hundred years ago. Other writers such as Kalidas about whom you read in chapter 10, wrote in Sanskrit. Page number 120 A verse from the Meghdud Here is a verse from Kalidas's best-known poem, The Meghdud, in which a monsoon cloud is imagined to be a messenger between lovers 
who are separated from one another. See how the poet describes the breeze that will carry the cloud northwards. A cool breeze, delightful as it is touched, with the fragrance of the earth, swollen by your showers, inhaled deeply by elephants and causing the wild figs to ripen, will blow gently as you go. Do you think Kalidas can be described as a lover of nature? Recording and preserving old stories, a number of Hindu religious stories that were in circulation earlier were written down around the same time. These include the Puranas. Puran literally mean old. The Puranas contain stories about gods and goddesses such as Vishnu, Shiva, Durga or Parvati. They also contain details on how they were worshipped. Besides, there are accounts about the creation of the world and about kings. The Puranas were written in simple Sanskrit verse and were meant to be heard by everybody, including women and Shudras, who were not allowed to study the Vedas. They were probably recited in temples by priests and people came to listen to them. Two Sanskrit epics, the Mahabharat and Ramayana, had been popular for a long time. Some of you may be familiar with these stories. The Mahabharat is about a war fought between the Kauravas and the Pandavas, who were cousins. This was a war to gain control of the throne of the Kurus and their capital, Hastinapur. The story itself was an old one, but was written down in the form which we know it today, about 1,500 years ago. Both the Purans and the Mahabharat are supposed to have been compiled by Vyas. The Bhagavad Gita, about which you learned in Chapter 9, was also included in the Mahabharat. The Ramayan is about Ram, a prince of Kausal, who was sent into exile. His wife Sita was abducted by the king of Lanka named Ravan and Ram had to fight a battle to get her back. He won and returned to Ayodhya, the capital of Kausal, after his victory. Like the Mahabharat, this was an old story that was now written down. Valmiki is recognized as the author of the Sanskrit Ramayan. There are several versions, many of which are performed, of the Mahabharat and the Ramayan popular amongst people in different parts of the subcontinent. Find out about a version in your state. Stories told by ordinary people. Ordinary people also told stories, composed poems and songs, sang, danced and performed plays. Some of these are preserved in collections of stories such as the Jatak and the Panchatantra which were written down around this time. Stories from the Jatakas were often shown on the railings of stupas and in paintings in places such as Ajanta. Here is one such story. Page number 122 The Story of the Monkey King Once upon a time, there was a great monkey king who lived on the banks of the Ganga in the Himalayas with 80,000 followers. They fed on the fruit of a special mango tree, which were very sweet. Such exquisite mangoes did not grow on the plains. One day, a ripe mango fell into the river and floated all the way to Varanasi. There, the king of the city, who was bathing in the river, found it and was amazed when he tasted it. He asked the foresters of his kingdom whether they could find the tree for him and they led him all the way to the Himalayas. There, the king and his courtiers had their fill of mangoes. At night, 
the king discovered that the monkeys were also feasting on the fruit and decided to kill them. However, the king of the monkeys worked out a plan to save his followers. He broke off branches of the mango tree and tied them to form a bridge across the river and held on to one end till all his followers crossed over. Exhausted with the effort, he fell down and lay dying. The human king saw what had happened and tried unsuccessfully to revive the monkey. When he died, the king mourned his death and paid him full respect. This story is shown on a piece of sculptor found from a stupa at Bharhut in central India. Can you identify which parts of the story are shown in the sculptor? Why do you think these were chosen? A picture is shown on this page describing the story of the monkey king. Page number 123 Writing Books on Science This was also the time when Aryabhat, a mathematician and astronomer, wrote a book in Sanskrit known as the Aryabhatiyam. He stated that day and night were caused by the rotation of the earth on its axis. Even though it seems as if the sun is rising and setting every day, he developed a scientific explanation for eclipses as well. He also found a way of calculating the circumference of a circle, which is nearly as accurate as the formula we use today. Varaha Mihir, Brahma Gupta and Bhaskaracharya were some other mathematicians and astronomers who made several discoveries. Try and find out more about them. Zero While numerals had been used earlier, mathematicians in India now invented a special symbol for zero. This system of counting was adapted by the Arabs and then spread to Europe. It continues to be in use throughout the world. The Romans used a system of counting without using zero. Try and find out more about it. Ayurveda Ayurveda is a well-known system of health science that was developed in ancient India. The two famous practitioners of Ayurveda in ancient India were Charak, 1st and 2nd centuries CE, and Sushrut, 4th century CE. Charak Sanghita, written by Charak, is a remarkable book on medicine. In his treatise, Sushrut Sanghita, Sushrut speaks about elaborate surgical procedures. Key words, stupa, temple, painting, epic, story, Purana, Science Mathematics, Elsewhere Paper has become a part of our daily lives. The books we read are printed on paper and we use paper for writing. Paper was invented in China about 1900 years ago by a man named Kai Lun. He beat plant fibers, cloth, rope, and the bark of trees, soaked these in water and then pressed, drained and dried the pulp to create paper. Even today, handmade paper is made through a similar process. The technique of making paper was a closely guarded secret for centuries. It reached Korea about 1,400 years ago and spread to Japan soon after. It was known in Baghdad about 1,800 years ago. From Baghdad, it spread to Europe, Africa and other parts of Asia, including the subcontinent. What were manuscripts in early India made out of? Hint, see Chapter 1, page number 124. Imagine 
you are sitting in a mandap of a temple. Describe the scene around you. Let's recall. 1. Match the following. Stupa Shikhar Mandap Garbhagrihi Pradakshina Path Place Where the image of the deity is installed. Mound Circular path around the stupa. Place in temples where people could assemble. Tower 2. Fill in the blanks. A. Fill in the blank. Was a great astronomer. B. Stories about gods and goddesses are found in the fill in the blank. C. Fill in the blank is recognized as the author of the Sanskrit Ramayan. D. Fill in the blank and fill in the blank are two Tamil epics. Some important dates. Beginning of stupa building. 2,300 years ago. Amaravati, 2,000 years ago. Kalidas, 1,600 years ago. Iron Pillar, Temple at Bhitargaon. Paintings at Ajanta, Aryabhat, 1,500 years ago. Durga Temple, 1,400 years ago. Page number. 125. Let's discuss. 3. Make a list of the chapters in which you find mention of metal working. What are the metals objects mentioned or shown in those chapters? 4. Read the story on page number 122. In what ways is the monkey king similar to or different from the kings you read about in chapter 5 and 10. Find out more and tell a story from one of the epics. Let's do. Number 6. List some steps that can be taken to make buildings and monuments accessible to differently abled people. Number 7. Try and list as many uses of paper as you can. Number 8. If you could visit any of the places described in this chapter, which would you choose and why? Page number 126. A quick look at dates. Throughout the book, we have used approximate dates to give you a rough idea of when events processes took place. Using the year 2000 as our starting point, generally the letter C, which stands for the Latin word circa, meaning approximate, is used for such dates. You will find dates written differently in other books that you may use. For instance, for the Paleolithic period, chapter 2, Dates may be mentioned in terms of millions of years ago, written as MYA. The beginning of farming and herding at Mehargarh, Chapter 2, dates to C.6000 BC or BCE. The Harappan cities flourished between C.2700 and 1900 BCE. The Rig Ved was composed between C. 1500 and 1000 BCE. Mahajanpad and cities developed in the Ganga Valley and new ideas associated with the Upanishads, Jainism and Buddhism emerged C. 500 BCE. Alexander invaded the Northwest, c. 327 to 325 BCE. Chandragupta Maurya became king, c. 321 BCE. Ashok 
ruled between C. 272 or 268 to 231 BCE. The composition of Sangam texts C. 300 BCE to 300 CE. The reign of Kanishka C. 78 to 100 CE. The establishment of the Gupta Empire C. 320 CE. The compilation of the Jain texts at the council at Vallabhi C. 512 or 521 CE. The rule of Harshvardhan 606 to 647 CE. Sang comes to India 630 to 643 CE. The rule of Pulkeshin II, 609 to 642 CE. In some cases, for example, the date from when Ashoka began to rule, you may find that more than one date is shown. This is because historians have not been able to agree on which is the correct date. Dates with question marks after them indicate that these are uncertain. Page number 127. On this page, map number 8 is shown. This is the political map of India. It shows the current states of India with their capitals mentioned. Ladakh, Leh, Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar, Himachal Pradesh, Shimla, Punjab, Chandigarh, Haryana, Chandigarh, Uttarakhand, Dehradun, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Lucknow, Rajasthan, Jaipur, Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal, Gujarat, Gandhinagar, Bihar, Patna, Jharkhand, Ranchi, West Bengal, Kolkata, Sikkim, Gangtok, Assam, Dispur, Meghalaya, Shillong, Arunachal Pradesh, Itanagar, Nagaland, Kohima, Manipur, Imphal, Mizoram, Aizol, Agartala, Odisha, Bhuvaneshwar, Chhattisgarh, Raipur, Maharashtra, Mumbai, Goa, Panaji, Telangana, Hyderabad, Karnataka, Bengaluru, Puducherry, Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Kerala, Thiruvananthapuram, Lakshadweep Islands, Kavarati, page number 128. Notes The chapter 11 of total 11 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Babla Kochar, producer Vimlesh Chaudhary, presented by CIET NCERT, New Delhi, India.